So I'm going to rotate with R. And X is not the right axis. Sometimes it's trial and error, Y axis. Um, and then I want to rotate this one, actually, because I noticed I, I missed that, right? This one's rotated, that one's not. I just hit the one key to uh, go to the side view. Different number keys will bring you to different views on the numpad, but you have to enable something called emulate numpad if you don't actually have a numpad. And I can show you how to do that later. It's not super important. So I want to select all these, but I'm, I'm super, super lazy, and I don't want to have to select each of these and hold shift and then rotate around and grab them, even though I do sometimes do that. You know, that's boring. I don't want to do that. So I can hold down Option, and then I right click on the edge that defines a, a loop. So you can imagine this, these vertices as a loop that goes around it. That, and I can hold Option and right click on it, and it selects all of them. And that's one of the really nice things about using quads, that they've got this sort of topology where it knows what defines a loop. The, the program knows, and so you can tell it, I want to select everything in this loop, and it takes you time. So, I can rotate this on the y-axis, and there, that simple operation with no problem. Um, now, I hit option, I can select, grab, grab the, the tip, or the cap of this. Maybe I want to scale it out on the y-axis, and maybe extrude some more. Maybe just the last one. Okay, so knife tool is K, or it's nicer to use it in protect select mode. Uh, if you don't, if you want to um, select all the polygons, you hit A, and that select everything in the entire mesh. You hit A again to deselect everything in the entire mesh. So, if you, in case you've been um, hitting shift and clicking things again to deselect them, you can just hit A twice to deselect. So we're going to cut here again, hit enter. Now I've got this nice looking bit. Um, now I don't want these to be squares here. I want those to be actually triangles that take back. So I can enable a sort of magnetic property down here to snap. And you can tell what to snap to. So I'm going to tell it to snap to vertices. Snap to a vertex, snap to the closest one, and I enable it by clicking the magnet. And then if I grab a polygon, it will snap to the nearest thing. So I want to keep this one here, and I'm going to grab this one and move that one there. And this is a nice sort of tooled edge of my house. And if you want to select this face, uh, actually turn that off before you any other modeling or make your life miserable. Okay, and now what happens is here there actually live 
two vertices occupying the same space. But you can get rid of that really easily by opening this side panel with a T or by clicking here. And you can do select everything and click remove doubles. And that just removes anything that doubles in the model, anything that's occupying the same space. So if you've got two um, triangles and you magnetically connect them together, select them all, and then remove doubles, and it will actually stitch them together. Because the mesh is defined by the triangles and how they connect. So I'm going to click remove doubles here, and it'll say removed two vertices up here. Those are the ones, the extra ones on the tip of hoe. And there's, you know, it's looking like a pretty respectable hoe. Um, you'll notice it's got spots you can see everywhere. So maybe I want to set this to smooth shading. This is also in the, the T menu. So smooth shading. You know, with a texture that could look pretty good. So uh, what would you like me to do next? Would you like me to model something more advanced? Or would you like me to show you how to texture this maybe? Or how to color it? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's called a, a Boolean operation. Um, you can do that. That's kind of expensive, though, because uh, if you're trying to, if, if you imagine this is all made of triangles connected together, if you do an operation like that, then it has to add a lot of polygons to make them match up nicely. So you, there, are, there are better ways to do that. This isn't like a program like SolidWorks, where everything's defined mathematically, and that's an easy process to do. Um, but you can do that, so I can take a cube. I've actually never experimented with this. Okay. Oh, if, if you're, uh, when you add a model, it gets put at your cursor. So you can reset your cursor by going Shift S, and then you go Cursor to Center. Uh, you can also select something and go Alt G to reset its coordinates. Uh, question. Um, is there like some kind of guide to what? Uh, yeah, it's on Google. You can Google it. Um, you can also, people usually in their videos show you how to do things. Um, and they actually have a thing that, they've got the thing working that shows you the keys you're pressing. Uh, you can also ask me and I'll just tell you. And the third way is just like in keyboard shortcuts, a lot of them are documented in the menus. So most of these operations you can do without, you know, knowing what the shortcut is but I'm teaching you how to do things the fast way. But if you can imagine what kind of, what category your action would fall under, like is it a view operation, is it a selection operation, is it an object operation, you can go through the menus and find out. Some of these things don't even have shortcuts. You'd have to do that by going into the menus. <coughs> but that's how I learned most of these. I learned them just by going through the menus and saying, oh, I do this a lot, I should learn the shortcut for it. And you can, uh, you can escape the menus by hitting escape and it just makes it disappear. Yes? How do I get to the menu? The menu. So, okay, excellent question. So, if you're in edit mode, it gives you different menu options. They're at the bottom here. Um, and keep in mind, you can't change mode unless your mouse is in this box here. If I'm over here and I hit tab, it doesn't do anything. If I'm in this, it does. That's actually really helpful, as you'll discover, because it prevents you from accidentally switching modes. So I've never experimented with this Boolean operation that you just asked me about, but I might just try it out. A lot of these you can find tutorials for online just by Googling it. This sounds like a pretty easy one, I'll see. So, object, let's see. add a cube directly in a mesh, and what that does is means the, that they both become part of the same object. Okay. Um, I can't figure out how to do it right now. I don't want to waste too much time on that, but you can figure that out pretty simple. 
like say I want to subtract one cube from the other. Um, you could kind of manually do this pretty easy. Uh, you can also use snapping. So, um, There are, there are different ways I can do this. Actually, I won't go into that right now. That becomes more complicated. Okay, uh, would you like, guys, would you like me to texture this hoe or give it color or give it a material or model something a bit more advanced? Texture? Okay. So, uh, for it to have a texture, it needs to first have a material. So I go into this materials thing. It looks, it's got that little orange circle. And I go plus. And it adds a new material. You go minus, it resets everything. You can just select the material you've already created. So I'm going to say, on average, this hoe is uh, pretty bright. So I'm going to want it to look like shiny metal. I'm going to say it's actually color neutral. Make it pink. I'm going to make it color neutral for now so it looks like a proper. So before you can put a texture on it, you have to define exactly what. Um, so, so a texture, as I defined at the beginning, is a bitmap thing. It's usually like a box, it's got pixels. And your model is really fancy, you know, maybe it's a cube. And if you tell us to just stick the texture on there, it'll ask, okay, how the heck am I supposed to wrap this sheet of paper around this cube? And so you have to do something called unwrapping on your model. So if you imagine this cube, if you guys have ever made like tiny paper cubes for any reason, I don't know, maybe you have, then you'll know that a cube can unwrap to a shape. You know, a cube has six faces. So it can unwrap to a shape like this. Six, and, you know, there are different ways you can unwrap it. Maybe you don't want this one to be at the end because for certain efficiency reasons, it's better to have square textures, and that means it's better to unwrap things so they're close to a square. And if you want to move that over there. Um, and I'll show you how to deal with unwrapping. That's a bit more complicated. Uh, basically, it involves um, defining seams on your object. So you can go in edge, edge select mode and select edges like, like this, and there and then maybe here, and you can go uh, make mark seam, and that means that when you go into UV unwrap mode and you select unwrap, it'll say, okay, it's been cut here, so pull that part out, and then maybe you know, that would be a seam, and that would be a seam, and then that would be a seam, and the one on the other side would be a seam, and then let's see, maybe there'd be one last seam there, and then this wouldn't be a seam, this would be that long part here, It, you have to kind of you'll get used to it by playing with it in the game or in, in the uh, in Blender. So let's uh, let's just find seams for this. So let's go to edit mode, and I'm going to say that maybe it's got a seam all the way along its edge, and then maybe uh, I held Option by the way and grabbed the edge to select the whole thing, uh, and I'll do that again. It's the tip. I hold Option and Shift to add to your selection with some edge. So I've decided this entire thing, this entire edge is a seam. Uh, I go Control E is where you can go mark seam. You can also find it under some one of these other ones. Uh, hold up. It's I think under edges mark seam. So control E is the edges panel and it pulls it out of the menu so you can access it quicker. So control E uh, mark seam here. And it'll highlight those with red to show that it's a seam. And then I'm going to use that K tool again to cut this because I want that to be a seam there. And I'm going to select that. And maybe this hose got a little dip at the end. And I go control E mark seam. So now that I've got now I've defined kind of roughly what the texture will look like. I'm going to reuse this panel down here. Uh, you'll notice that these boxes 
are kind of reusable. You could assign anything to view in this box. I could make this another 3D view here if I wanted. And that moves the things out of the bottom. So I keep it back in properties. So I'm repurposing this one. This is a timeline here. This is for animations. You don't need it. So I'm going to repurpose that to something called a UV image editor. So um, important to note, in tree space, you've got your uh, Z, we'll call this X, you've got your Y here, right? So those are already used up. So how do you define a texture, right? This isn't X and Y because they don't match up with these X's and Y's. So you give them U and V, and I don't remember which one is which, but just remember that that's why it's called UV. It's not like ultraviolet or anything. It's just defining a different Y and a different X as to differentiate it from your, your uh, 3D space. So UV unwrapping is unwrapping the 3D stuff into the 2D space so that you can properly assign colors. So I've cut around my hoe. You know, it's not something, that's not a sentence I ever thought I'd say. <laughs> um, so I can go mesh, UV unwrap, and there are different options. Uh, I'm going to select a basic unwrap operation. And it didn't do anything. And the reason for that is that I didn't have it selected. So I get A, mesh, UV unwrap, select unwrap, and there's a representation of what my hoe looks like. I can hit Control L, and that will grab everything that's linked. So that works in this model too, as you may notice, certain concepts extend to different categories in Blender. So if I hit Control L here, it would also select everything that's linked. This is the same as selecting everything. So in this case though, because these parts are overlapping a bit, I hit Control L and I can grab everything without having to go in and select you know, the individual overlapping vertices. And scrolling is zooming, just like in this. Um, middle mouse button, instead of, pan instead of rotating, is actually now panning. Um, and you can grab things and even though it's the U and V axis, you can actually just hit X to grab it on the X axis. And it, the, by default, it, yeah, it, it's um, moving it by increments with a magnet thing here. You can disable that if you want. It's not a huge problem to me. So if I wasn't really concerned about using up tons and tons of texture space for these really skinny things, right, it, it, if I define an image for this, you want images to be squares just because your graphics card would like that better. Uh, I'd be wasting all this space. So maybe I'm going to cut this again in here. So I think maybe the handle is a good place to cut it. That seems like a good idea. So I'm going to grab grab that edge loop. Right, and you can see that, well, you can't really see it. You can see that oh, that's all I've got collected. And you can hit Z again to go to wireframe mode, and you can see it kind of has this gradient to show you what you've got collected and what edges those are select connected to. So I'm going to grab those. I'm going to control E, mark scene. Right, control E for edge menu, mark scene. Is anyone lost? Or maybe you're modeling like a cow instead? <coughs> I don't know. You're applying these concepts differently. So, I'm going to grab everything again. It hasn't changed. I can go mesh, UV unwrap, and it repeats the operation, this time keeping in mind the extra scenes. That. And there we go. It's now cut off. It cut off this top part as if you know you wrapped newspaper over this front part or, or something. I mean, maybe imagine that these are paper mache or or tapakura um, stuff, right? So it's grabbed this part and that's uh, one of these. I don't know which one. It's grabbed this part. And that's one of those. You can uh, select different parts of your model to identify where they take place. So if I, for instance, select these, it tells me, oh, that, that's where it is. Okay, yeah, th that makes sense. That these, this would be the long wooden handle here, going all the way to the bottom. And I don't like this because, um, you see this part at the bottom here? That's actually the circle that's on the bottom. And I think that's weird. I think that cir circle be should be connected. So I can go here into edge select mode, select that edge, control E, um, clear seam, get to it. So control E, clear seam, get to it. And I can 
select this edge loop again by holding Option and Shift and selecting around it. Maybe I'll have to grab it all by hand. Control E, mark seam. There we go. And these edges or these uh, seams line up. You can imagine those are cut from the object. And shoot. Again, wrap, wrap. Cool. Now the bottoms here. This is like one side of the um, of the hoe, like the front side. This is the back side. Maybe you don't want to differentiate that. You could remove one of the seams that runs, runs up the side, and then it just wrap, wraps all the way around. So I'm going to do that. Clear seam. This is something you're going to do a lot. If you're UV unwrapping, you're going to be trying to find ways to optimize your uh, texture space usage. Um, that's why UV unwrapping is something you usually do at the end after you're done making the model, which is why I don't really like it, because I don't ever consider myself done with a model. So I'm going to mesh, UV unwrap, unwrap this again. And now this is one contiguous part. That's the handle. And if I wanted to make that line up and be flat, I could hold Option, grab that edge, F for scale, scale on the y-axis. You can hit zero, and it'll type along in the bottom here. You can type, I think, Python expressions in there. Um, or uh, maybe not all of them. But you can type zero here, scale zero, and then you hit enter, and it'll scale that to zero. Or you can hit S10, and it'll scale it to 10 times. That's really helpful if you want to define things mathematically. So sometimes I want to rotate something by, like, half of one of the uh, the angles inside a hexagon, so I go like calculate out what that is, type it in, and it works perfectly. This time I just want zero. And I'm going to grab the bottom, option, right click, scale, y, zero, right, enter. Uh, maybe grab the top, grab that on the y axis, <coughs> move that up, uh, select this whole length thing, turn off the magnetic snapping scale on the y-axis, make extra good use of this precious texture space. Maybe I'll scale it down a bit. You don't want these things to be too close to each other, because if you overlap your textures a bit, if your textures uh, overlap this a bit, then they'll bleed into other textures. And you might have like the metal from this hoe starting to get into the handle, and it'll look weird. I'm going to control L, G to move this. Select that, control L, G. Rotate just like in the 3D mode. It's R just like in the 3D mode. G just like in the 3D mode. Right. Control L. Grab. So now it's unwrapped. There's no image there, but if I wanted to add an image, it would appear. It could appear on this. To make that work, I have to give it a texture. I have to give it the right kind of texture. So there's three. There's a um, brush texture that's for painting on this. There's a uh, world texture that, don't worry about that. I want a regular texture. I want it to be um, an image, so I go type image. This is one. This is a panel you're going to be fighting with a lot if you do this a lot. You just have to get used to it. Uh, I've spent ages getting used to this. So coordinates, this is how it's mapped. So since we just UV, UV unwrapped it, we're going to select UV coordinates. Um, projection, I have no idea what that does. Just don't touch it. It's <laughs> probably, it does, probably doesn't do bad stuff, but you know, there's no sense touching it if you don't know what it does. Like, just Google it. They'll tell you. And you want to start with this influences. So our texture could influence, say, um, the normal, right? If you guys know what normals are, that's really fascinating to you. If you don't, don't worry about it. Right? You can also affect the specular. Specular is how shiny it is. So you could define a map of the object that shows these are the shiny parts. These are the dull parts. And it's really nice because you can have a model that's selectively shiny without creating a separate object for the shiny parts. So this is just going to be a color one, though. This is going to be a color material, a color texture. So I'm going to go new, and you can create one right in here. I'm going to call it Diffuse. Diffuse is just like the sort of matte colors, just the colors that make up the model. I enter. I don't need alpha because I don't. I just don't. Don't worry about it. Uh, 1024 by 1024 is big if you're in a game, but 
there's no harm in starting big and scaling it down later if you need more textures, texture memory for your game to run well. So let's just leave those. Um, and now, down here, this is my UV image thing again. I can select that image that I just created, and, and it shows me how this image match, matches up. And again, it's not appearing on my model just yet. And the reason for that is that the view mode by default is supposed to be super optimal and run really quickly, so it doesn't do that unless you ask it to. So in this side panel, N, the numerical stuff, you can go display, you scroll down, and you can choose different shading engines. One I really like is called GLSL. They use G GLSL shaders, so it's close to what a game engine might do. Uh, I think you can probably define your own shaders if you know shader language. I don't. And you enable texture to make it texture. And look, the black from this matched on top. You can also enable that here. I don't know why they're like two separate ones, but there are. 